Some 200 million people take statins worldwide. Here in the United States, it's 30 million. And if the brand new guidelines get widely adopted, that number will soar dramatically in the next few years. So wouldn't it be nice if we better understood how statins actually work? That's at least the thought process of Dr. Uh, Michael J. Blaha, MD, P MPH of Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. This is a paper coming up in Jack on December 24th, 2013. How do statins work? Changing paradigms with implications for statin allocation. Why did you write the paper first off? Well, this was a, uh, an editorial in response to a paper about um, looking at the way statins work in terms of using PET imaging, showing that with statins, not only does inflammation in the carotid arteries decrease, but also in the gums, in the periodontal region decrease, showing that statins seem to have effects beyond just cholesterol. So what can we say now? What have we learned in the last few years in terms of mechanisms that you talk about and review in your paper? Well, I think that we can say that for sure that statins do more than just lower cholesterol. And this raises some big questions for us because we, it changes the way we think about who we give statins to. If statins just worked by lowering cholesterol, we would give them just to patients with high cholesterol. If statins worked in other mechanisms, it might change the way we give drugs. And I think that's reflected in the new guidelines. So what do you think about the new guidelines? The new guidelines, I, uh, I'm in support of them in general. They take a risk-based approach, not a cholesterol-based approach. Identify someone's risk and treat them with a statin, a risk-reducing agent, if their risk is suitably high. It has a, uh, the new guidelines have a little bit more of a disconnect with cholesterol than they used to, uh, perhaps recognizing that statins have effects beyond just cholesterol. I mean, we've talked about the pleiotropic effects of statins for years, but there didn't seem to be enough data to actually support either what it was or the mechanisms. You're saying now the data is there and we really can put our hat on this. Well, I don't think we're exactly clear on how statins work yet. That's still an open question, but we are clear that statins work in almost all patients at all levels of LDL cholesterol, primary and secondary prevention, um, and at any level of baseline risk. So really what we're saying is you have to have a high enough baseline risk to, to get a net benefit from the drug, and that could be because it's stabilizing plaque, that could be because it's reducing inflammation, that could be because it's reducing atherogenic lipoproteins too. I don't think we're clear which of those three are dominating, but as we learn more, that might change the way we allocate statins, which is one of the biggest questions in medicine, really. So the specifics in terms of the implications of all of this, clinically speaking. Yeah, for right now, I think um, the, the piece that I wrote talking about three different mechanisms of whether the way statins might work. That's the lipoproteins, inflammation, or actually plaque-based effects. What I, what I do think is the guidelines have adapted an approach similar to what I was suggesting in this paper, which is really it's about risk right now. Since we don't know exactly the way statins work, we know they reduce risk. Let's find people that are at risk enough to benefit and give them the drug. But we do need to know a lot more because It'll change also when we give the drug uh, early in their lives, later in lives. Do we identify atherosclerosis with imaging tests first? Do we measure inflammation in the bloodstream? All these things will change depending on the way we best understand statins work. I mean, literally, because of the other paper that's in the same issue with Jack, if a patient has periodontal disease, does that mean one more checklist that says, okay, consider this patient for a statin, along with a variety of other things, periodontal disease. Yeah. Yep, check off statin now. Yes, yeah, so the periodontal disease question is a really interesting one. We, we know now that periodontal disease is a risk factor for heart disease, probably because it's a systemic inflammatory state, and it's a marker for other, other behavioral issues too. But I would not say that just based on periodontal disease, do you need a statin. In fact, I've been asked the question, do statins help reduce periodontal disease? Well, just like we demand in cardiology that we have studies that show outcome benefits, I'm sure the people who care most about periodontal disease also want to see an outcomes benefit. So periodontal disease is one of the many novel risk factors for, for heart disease. But it, unto itself, I don't think that would change really anything about our manager. But it's very intriguing. Statins have a, make a difference on inf inflammation in the gums. I think it's really intriguing, and it certainly takes us beyond just cholesterol. And what do we need to know next? Where do you think the, the information is going to come in terms of understanding statins and their mechanisms? I think it's going to come on multiple levels. We certainly need to understand from a basic science and you know, pharmacokinetic kind of uh, way exactly how statins work. But that really needs to get linked in closely with the, the folks who think about um, the statin allocation at a public health point of view and the statin allocation point of view. The mechanisms have to talk to the policymakers so that we make uh, educated decisions about who we give statins to based on our best understanding how they work. So I think we need to see more coming together of the folks who are writing guidelines and the people who best understand statins at the basic level. And the paper from uh, Dr. Blaha and, of course, the original paper that uh, is talking about periodontal disease, it is in the December 24th issue of Jack. Please go take a look at both of those papers for CardioSource World News. I'm Rick McGuire.